Hey, Vasters. So today's another episode off the cuff, just like last time. (laughs) Um, I just wanted to talk briefly about um, something that was in the news this week that you guys probably heard about. Um, A young lady was kidnapped this week, and I think it kind of took the Internet by storm for a brief moment. And I just feel like it's super important to highlight these situations when they happen so that we can do our best to avoid repeat situations. Because they say if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. And something that has been running rampant in black spaces, especially poor black spaces, is the urban legend of us being kidnapped and trafficked. So the reason why it's an urban legend is because usually when we are lost, we don't get found. There are so many missing women of color, predominantly black women, who go missing, their families spend endless years searching for them, and they never come home. Or when they do come home, it's almost always a tragic ending. So when this particular situation came across my feed, it was jarring. It was a weird feeling because it just, I don't know if from the minute she crossed my feed, um, I felt like she was going to come home. I'm not sure what that means to anybody else, but my grandma always used to talk about her spirit and how her spirit always felt certain ways about certain things. And she didn't miss. There were a couple of times where she overdid it, but she didn't miss very often. So um, the young lady's name is Carlethea Russell. And if you heard about this story or if you haven't heard about this story, essentially how it went is this young woman was coming home from work. She was picking up food to bring home to her family. And she saw a toddler walking down the interstate, uh, mile marker 11, off of John Hawkins Parkway. So she saw this toddler, probably about four years old, and she did what any smart person would do. She called 911. She reported that she saw this toddler walking on the side of the road. Now, this is record. There, There is record of her calling. And I guess, you know. You see a small child walking aimlessly with no adult, you get concerned. As a mom, I definitely would be concerned. And so after she reported this to 911, she called a relative, again, like any smart person would do. And while she was on the phone with the relative, she decided that she was going to stop and try to retrieve this child, probably because they're on the side of an interstate and she wanted to make sure that They did not get hit by a car or, you know, kidnapped. And also probably to figure out where the heck are their parents. So while she was on the phone with her relatives, the relatives heard a scream and then the line dropped. The line was still open. They could hear static in the interstate. The car is passing by, but they never heard anything else from Carlethea. So after that, they reported her missing. Clearly, she uh, appeared to have been abducted. So the search was on. Now, it took a while for this to pop up on my feed. But long story short, she was missing for 48 hours. And we all know, at least if you watch true crime or if you follow true crime, that the first 48 hours of any missing person's case is very crucial. Because that's when things are still fresh. People are still making mistakes. People are reeling from the situation and they might give out information that they won't give out later on upon further thought. So Carlithia was missing for 48 hours and I made a post during that time period to talk about using your smartwatch to help your family, your relatives, your loved ones to track your location, thinking that I was just so ahead of the curve. And people were saying, well, she had a smartwatch on too. Her phone, her smartwatch, her wig, and her car were all 
left at the side of the road when whoever picked her up. So as much as I thought I was probably going to beat an abductor by keeping my smartwatch on, these people were one step ahead. And so um, all of those things were left behind. So they were able to trace her to that last known location, but that was about it. Now, social media was up in arms. Everybody was sharing her, celebrities, friends, family, everyone was sharing her. And then mysteriously, what, yesterday, day before yesterday, day before yesterday, um, she returned home to her parents' house on foot. The only information that we have so far is that she said she was at a red roof inn, which yeah, if you know, you know, Red Roof Inn is notorious for prostitution, drugs, transient people looking for somewhere affordable to stay. They are seedy establishments. So, I mean, if a kidnapper were looking for somewhere to take someone where they probably wouldn't, no one would come looking, probably a Red Roof Inn. Sounds about right. It's If you thought Motel 6 was bad, Motel 6 is is here, and Red Roof is probably under the ground. So, uh, I mean, we don't have much information on what happened to her. I think it's still fresh, and if she were abducted, if she was abducted, she's going to need time to get her mental back together. If well, people have been saying that she ran away and probably had a mental break. I don't personally think so, but I don't know anything. So, you know, I can't really give much feedback on that. Um, but in any event, whatever the situation was, whatever happened to her, it is safe to say that that is a traumatic experience. And the one thing that in in either regard, whether she were kidnapped or she ran away, I think it's so important to look at signs of mental distress, signs of mental instability in the people that are around us, the people we love, the people we care about, the people we don't care about, and take note of inconsistencies. Take note when something stands out because there are people walking this earth who are sociopaths. Now, if we believe that she ran away herself and she absconded, she might be a sociopath. Do I think that's what happened? No. I, I personally believe she was taken and she may have managed to escape uh, for whatever reason. Or, you know, people kidnap people for a number of reasons. Everyone who kidnaps people isn't necessarily a professional. Even traffickers aren't necessarily professionals if they're at the bottom rung of their trafficking ring. So it is possible that an amateur took her or someone, a scorned lover, we don't know. And just because she made it home alive doesn't mean that she set herself up to be kidnapped. Could just mean whoever took her did a bad job of taking her. And I'm glad that they did if that's what took place. So what is a sociopath? A sociopath is a person with a personality disorder characterized by antisocial behavior, lack of empathy, and disregard for the rights of others. Sociopaths are often manipulative and charming, and they may even be able to blend in with society without being detected. However, their lack of empathy and their willingness to exploit others can make them dangerous individuals. Now, let's think about this scenario. A child walking along the side of the road alone, unsupervised. That's perfect bait for an unsuspecting woman. Men, I'm not sure. I'm the call 911-er in my relationship. I'm constantly seeing weird things happening on the side of the road and I'm constantly calling 911. This happens to me at least a couple times a year. Like right before this situation happened, I saw a car, a sedan get hit by a tractor trailer. 
I was like, oh my gosh, I'm screaming in the car. <laughs> I called 911. I was the first person to call. Did I stop and, and go see what was happening? No. I was late for work. So I kept driving, but I made sure I gave locations. I gave my phone number. If they needed more information from me, they could call me back. But I kept it moving. However, I have seen an overturned vehicle on the side of the road. Looked like they just rolled over. I called 911. It was broad daylight. I was with my husband. We had the strappy strap. I called 911 for help, and I went to see if the person needed help. But by the time I got over there to that side of the road, they had climbed out of the car. So there are people out there who will try to help others. I've even seen grass on fire on the side of the road. What the fuck? How does that even happen? So there are people out there who aren't necessarily looking to save someone, but they might spot something and not be afraid to reach out and help an individual that looks like they're in need. I helped an elderly man when I was seven months pregnant. He fell in the bushes and nobody saw him. All of that was sticking out of the bushes were his feet. And I pulled over and my mom was in the car. I wasn't alone. And I went and I lifted him out of the bushes and I dusted him off. <clears throat> he was old. He had to be like 80 something. And he didn't speak English. Nice little Haitian man. And I drove him up the street because the only word that we could both say was Publix. And I took him to the supermarket because that's where he was walking to when he fell into those bushes. Um, could I have gotten kidnapped in traffic? Absolutely. Because somebody could have been behind them bushes like, bitch, get in here. But I didn't. Thank God. So anyway, um, I say all of that to say that scenarios can be put in our paths that are set up by sociopaths, for example, to prey on our empathy, to prey on our emotions. A child who what, what woman is going to walk past a small child that they see that's in potential danger? Um, but well, a scenario that my mom and I came up with is that maybe that child was a little person maybe it wasn't actually a toddler and maybe what when she screamed it was because they turned around and she realized that it was an adult if y'all watch instagram there's those skits with that guy that little short guy and he pretends to be a kid i think his name is day day dad at day day whatever that's a grown-ass man right but from behind he looks like a kid um, there's a little Dominican dude. I'm not, I'm not a baby. I'm a man. He's a grown ass man. He's in his thirties. So anyway, I say all of that to say that they will can and will try to exploit people based on their lack of empathy. They don't give a fuck about kids. They don't give a damn about women and children. So it's not that hard to fathom that someone would set up a child and put that child at risk. If it was even a child to begin with. Um, there are a number of characteristics that can help to identify a sociopath. These include lack of empathy. So the sociopaths do not have the ability to understand or share the feelings of others. They may appear to be empathetic, but this is usually just a facade. Disregard for the rights of others. Sociopaths believe that they are above the law and that they can do whatever they want without consequences. They may lie, cheat, steal, or even harm others without feeling any remorse. It's the perfect person to traffic humans. They don't give a damn what happens to those people. They might even traffic their own family. Manipulative and charming. Sociopaths are often very charming and charismatic. They can use their charm to get what they want from others. In this particular situation, I don't think charisma was needed, but manipulation was definitely at play. Impulsive and irresponsible. Sociopaths often act on impulse and without thinking about the consequences. They may also be irresponsible and fail to meet their obligations. Now, you caught the person. You were sent out to catch an attractive young woman for the, the next batch of cattle. And you figure, hey, I got them. I did that. They're bound somewhere in a Motel 6 or a Red Roof Inn. And you figure you got the catch. Where's my money at? So here you are standing outside bragging, talking on the phone, whatever you're doing, setting up your payment, whatever. And because you're so comfortable and confident in the fact that you already made the catch, you become irresponsible. You start slacking. And that could be why she escaped. 
Tell me I'm wrong. Prone to violence. Sociopaths may be prone to violence. They may enjoy inflicting pain on others and they may not be afraid to use violence to get what they want. Carlethea's boyfriend said she was fighting for her life. It is possible that she was abused, sexually assaulted. Anything could have happened while she was kidnapped. And it lines up with the definition of a sociopath. These are things that you can find in the DSM. It's important to note that not all people with these characteristics are sociopaths. However, if you see a pattern of these behaviors in someone, it is important to be aware of the possibility that they may have a personality disorder. If you encounter people in your life like this, they just don't care. There's a difference between being emo and being apathetic. If they don't care about anything, if they'll do anything for a dollar, if they'll do anything to survive, if they'll do anything, just fuck it, I'll do it. Watch them, okay? Be aware of the people around you, even if it's somebody you know and love. Murderers have families too. If you are concerned that someone you know may be a sociopath, it is important to seek professional help. A mental health professional can assess the situation and provide treatment recommendations. I'm going to include some uh, resources in the links to this post later on, just in case you know somebody who needs extra support or who probably needs mental health resources. This might seem like a random situation, but it's not. It's actually not uncommon to have sociopaths walking the earth in, in society. So I hope this information helps. I hope you guys find this feedback useful. Kimmy at vforvag.com. We will talk about this more in the coming days. Mental health is really important to sexual health. And I hope this feedback is of value to you. Stay cool. Badge out.